Praise the Lord. Listen, I am on now on my phone. And so uh, I don't know what happened. Well, we know what happened, but we just bind the works of the enemy. We don't even give him glory on tonight. I am so happy to be here and to share with you even the word of the Lord on tonight. Uh, as we go to the word, uh, I do want you to know, uh, as, since I'm doing it from my phone, uh, I pray that you can hear me. If you can hear me, somebody let me know that you can hear me. But since I'm doing it from my phone, it's a little bit different than it is from uh, me um, going through my computer. Uh, I usually do it via my laptop, but tonight we're here. And so bless those who are here who have joined me. Bless those who have come back. All right. I know we lost some, but tell them to come back because we are here. We are back on tonight. And uh, boy, God is so good and he's so amazing. I'm glad you stuck it out. And here we are with the word of the Lord on tonight. I want us, we're going to talk tonight about uh, more spiritual gifts. And we've been talking about the gifts of, well, the first uh, gifts that we have shared. Uh, we have dealt with the, um, the, the gifts to know, say to know, the gifts to know. And the gifts to know, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Those are the gifts to know. And we just completed our series on discerning of spirits. So now we're going to go into the utterance gifts. Say utterance. Uh, and one is the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is an utterance gift, not a gift of knowledge or to know. It is utterance. And so we're going to talk about uh, utterance gift of prophecy. We're going to talk about the other utterance gifts. One is uh, tongues, the gift of tongues, and then the other would be interpretation of tongues. So those are the gifts that we're going to talk about this evening. We've been sharing at Mountains Hope. I just need to figure out, I hope, I want to make sure that you can hear me. I haven't done this. Praise the Lord. So let's go into the gift of prophecy. Let us pray. Because apparently somebody don't want us to go through this. But how many of you know God always prevailed? And that's what I want you to just really understand, that it is prevailing time. And I really want you to prevail in the things of God, all right? Are you ready to just prevail in the things of God? Hallelujah. So we give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise and we thank him as long as we're able to get the word of the Lord. And we are coming now. I want you as we go into the word, the word of God tells us in uh, first Corinthians. And we've been looking at first Corinthians chapter uh, 11 or chapter 12. And we've been talking about the gifts of the spirit. And so we're pretty clear about the gifts. Now, as we go through this, I do want you to understand one more time that the gift of the Spirit are given by the Holy Spirit. So every believer, every believer, if you're a believer, if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have spiritual gifts. All right? I want you to understand that. Secondly, I want you to understand that 1 Corinthians 12 deals with the spiritual gifts. 13 tells us that the way that we are to administer them is through love. And then 14 gives us order. All right. So we need order. We need to know that we have the gifts and we must operate in love. So let us pray. Let us pray. Hallelujah. God is good and God is faithful. Amen. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you that you take control of this line tonight. We bind every interrupting spirit, every scanner demon in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for great victory. We thank you for the word of the Lord. And we thank you what you have for your people on this evening. I declare I have not seen, ear has not heard, and neither has entered into the heart of man 
the things that you have prepared for those that love you. We thank you tonight that we love you corporately, collectively. We declare our love for you on tonight. And so, God, I ask that you begin to minister to your people and you be glorified, you be exalted, and you be magnified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God shall be glorified in all of this. There is a handout. It may be on uh, the line. If it's not yet, it will be, and you will uh, be able to download it. All right. Again, we're going, we're looking at the vocal gifts or the utterance gifts, and we're going to start with the gift of prophecy. This is so important. One of the passions that I have for teaching this and teaching on the gifts is that uh, the body of Christ needs to be mobilized in this day and this hour. All right. I, I think that sometimes we are sitting waiting for the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor and the teacher to move for them to prophesy, for them to operate in the gifts. But tonight I want you to know that God has ordained for you, every one of you, you have gifts and he wants every one of you to be mobilized in your gifts. He wants the gifts uh, of, of God to be made manifest because when the gifts are manifest, the spirit of God is manifested and we need the spirit of God to be made manifest in our lives on tonight. All right. To God be the glory. So we're going to activate uh, this gift of prophecy. Now, nobody can teach you how to prophesy. That's not what we're doing. What we want you to do is learn to hear from the spirit of the Lord. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Because as you hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, then you can say what God says. You cannot say what God says when you're not hearing what God says. We must hear. Say, I must hear. You must hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. All right. So as we look at this, the first thing that I want you to understand about prophecy is that the gift of prophecy is speaking under direct supernatural influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, everybody, if you are saved, you have a portion of prophecy. For Jesus Christ is the what? The spirit of prophecy. So if you're saved, you have the spirit of prophecy on the inside of you. Say, I have the spirit of prophecy. But not everyone has the gift. And tonight we're going to talk about the gift. And you don't want to go before God with your gift, but you want to move with God with your gift. And you must move by faith. Your gifts are activated by your faith. Prophecy is speaking under the direct supernatural influence of Holy Spirit himself. It is becoming the mouthpiece of God. Say the mouthpiece. It becomes a mouthpiece of God to verbalize his words as the spirit of God gives us utterance. And as the spirit of God gives us direction, I'm going to say what God says under the influence and the power of the Holy Ghost. It is important that I understand where my influence and where my power comes from. My power does not come from myself. My influence does not come from myself, what I think, what I feel, how I believe it should be. But my influence, my power comes from Holy Spirit himself. As we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 10, the Greek word for prophecy is prophetia, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-E-I-A, prophetia, say that, prophetia. And what this word means in the Greek is speaking forth the mind and the counsel of God. You see why it is so important, you know, not to say that God does not come and speak to us uh, uh, verbally because he can and he will. But isn't it so wonderful how he has designed the kingdom that his sons and daughters might release what he's saying and say what God is saying. So we are speaking prophecy, prophetia, saying what God says. 
And this is important because those that don't know the Lord can get a word from the Lord because of your obedience to the Lord. Oh, that's so powerful. And that can make them also believers. Anybody believe on tonight? So I want you to know the gift of prophecy, none of the gifts that we've been discussing or even continue to discuss, not one of these gifts have ceased. The gifts are still in operation today. And so as we look at the gift of prophecy, one of the things that I want you to understand is that prophecy must be accurate and it must be without contamination. We're going to go into this a little bit more. What do you mean accurate? When you're saying what God says, there is an accuracy. First, I am hearing what God is saying from heaven. You remember the word of the Lord in Isaiah 50 and verse number four, and it tells us that we have we the ear, we ear, we hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. We have the ear of the learned. I want you to understand this. Any of you that are mothers or, you know, and you have had a baby, uh, you have learned uh, if you're in one room and that child is in another room, you have learned how to tune your ear so that you could hear when that baby cries. That's important. That's the concept of the ear of the learned. The ear of the learned, that ear is one that becomes accustomed to. Now, as an ear of the learned, when we're hearing from heaven, we become accustomed to what God is saying in heaven. In other words, my sheep hear my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. So the sheep of God, the sons and daughters of God are hearing the voice of God. And you are practicing, you are tuning in. Uh, when, when that baby is in another room asleep, uh, you're listening for a whimper. You're, you're listening for a cry. You're listening for a rattle. You're listening. You have tuned your ear into here where when that baby makes a sound, say the baby is sleeping, you can hear when the baby wakes up. If the baby has been playing and becomes uncomfortable, you can hear the sound of that child. I want you to learn to tune your ear into the spirit of God and learn to hear what the spirit of God is saying on a regular basis. Nobody can do this for you. If people tell you I can teach you how to prophesy, that's not God. We can't teach you. Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. But what we can teach you is how to train your ear to hear. Not just the natural ear. We hear the baby crying with the natural ear. But we hear with the heart of understanding what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Oh, hallelujah. And so the word of God leaves Heaven leaves the voice, leaves the heart, leaves the mind of God and is revealed unto us. Now, remember, the scripture says the spirit of God searches the deep things of God and does what? Reveal it unto us. You must tune your ear in to hear what God, what the spirit of God is revealing unto us. In this season, that is so good because he's revealing your next moves. He's revealing how you're overcoming. He's revealing your healing. He's revealing your deliverance. He's revealing. Come on. God's got the plan. He's revealing even that in game. He's telling you this is your end. This is where you're going. And now I'm going to tell you the steps to get there. It's hearing. Somebody say hearing. I want you to tune in to what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Let me just take a moment to break right here. I want to tell you this. If you have questions regarding anything that we have already taught, and even now, I want you to send us an email to the Mountains Hope 
uh, uh, email address and I pray that they put it online. I want you to send your questions because I want to address those, especially if you believe you operate in any of the gifts that we have covered so far and the gifts that we will cover. But I want you to tune in so that you hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. I want to answer your questions. I don't want there to be any uh, preventions, anything that will stop you from hearing the word of God. All right. That being said, let us go back now. Let us understand this. So as we hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, as we are listening, as we have this ear of the learn, we must now understand that there can sometimes be hindrances. Sometimes there can be contamination to our prophecies. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. As a conduit, as a vessel that uh, transfers water from one end to the next, if we're transferring pure water and at, from one end it's pure, and if on the other end it comes out uh, dirty or tainted, it's not that the water was impure, it was the vessel that was used that was contaminated. Am I clear? Are you understanding me? If you're putting in clear water on one end of the hose and you have the hose, you have this vessel, you have this conduit, and on the other end, it is putting out a, a, a dirty water or there's something wrong, contaminated water. If that's the case, it's nothing wrong with the water. But it's something wrong with the vessel. Contaminated vessels will put out contaminated prophecy. Am I clear? Do you understand? And so I want to share just a few things and then I want to move on because it is so important. We have a right understanding and the right heart of God as we prophesy. You can prophesy. Oh, if you have the spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can prophesy. But greater than just prophesying, you have the gift of prophecy. We'll be able to touch on even the office of the prophet, which is different. It's a greater role, see? People who have the gift of prop the spirit of prophecy. Let me start there. People who have the spirit, who have Jesus Christ, you have the spirit of prophecy. Which means at certain times uh, in worship, when the presence of the Lord is there, you too can prophesy, even prophetic worshipers. Then we have times that those with the gift of prophecy, they will be more fluent. They will hear God at different times and in different levels. And it's not always when there is a worship or an atmosphere that's created. But then you have the office of the prophet. We're going to go into that, but the office of the prophet does not just prophesy. The spirit of prophecy prophesies. The gift of prophecy prophesies. But the prophet, yes, prophesies, but also executes his or her authority in the heavenlies. Oh, that is so good. See, there is power. What I want you to get, I shared this on our prayer line. For those of you that don't get on the prayer line, I want you to get this. First natural and then spiritual. So we are natural beings, and then we're also spiritual beings. We understand that we have dual citizenship. And so we have a citizenship in the heavenlies, and we have citizenship here in the earth. Now, our citizenship, watch this, in the heavenlies is the citizenship that governs our citizenship here in the earth realm. Did you get that? So that means whatever happens in the earth realm, oh, it's going to happen. We are in the world, but not of the world. We live in this world, so we're going to have challenges like the world has. We're going to have some issues that come up as the world has. But I want you to understand this. We don't execute, we don't operate from the natural realm in order to dictate what is to take place in the natural realm. But we execute, come on with me now, from the spirit realm. I want you to execute from the spirit realm and bring that which is in the spirit into the earth realm. That's how you occupy until he comes. 
Oh, how do I occupy? I understand I am a spiritual being. I understand I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I understand that I can have a, a, a different viewpoint, that I see from heavenly places what's happening in the earth realm. This is how I understand what spirit I'm up against, uh, what spirit I'm dealing with, uh, what spirit I must battle. How do I understand? Because I see it from a spiritual perspective. This is good. This is so good. All right. We're not talking about it. I'm not going to teach on that too much, but I really want you to get this. Because of your authority in spiritual places, in heavenly places, you command that which is taking place in the earth realm. You bring things in order. Now, God still uses the things of the earth in order to dictate or in order to manage or in order to bring to life the things in the spirit. That's why Jesus, when the man was born blind, he spat in the dirt and he put the dirt on the man's eyes. He used that which was natural to bring forth a miracle, which is spiritual. God is using those in the natural. This is why, yes, scientists, I know we say science and church don't mix, but God can use the scientists. God can use the doctors. God can use the lawyers. Come on with me. God, listen, God can give favor anywhere he desires. He uses sometimes the things in the natural in order to manifest what he's doing in the spirit. You ought to get that. Come on, come on. So I want you to grab a hold to who you are in the spirit. That you are co-laborers with Christ. That you have been given power and authority. And so the prophet recognizes that I have such authority that I don't just have to prophesy. But when I speak in the heavenlies, when I shift the heavenlies, when I declare in the heavenlies, when I tell those demons they've got to go, when I speak in the spirit realm... Everything in the earth realm comes in order and alignment. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Do you understand? Tell me you understand. Come on. You're not just a, a Janice or Lakari or James or you're, you're not just. That's not just who you are. You are a spiritual being. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Can I say this? Make Something happen. Oh, Rabasha. Make it happen. Make it happen. So the things, let me come back now, that contaminate, things that contaminate the vessel when there's a pure flow from heaven. Remember the conduit. The pure water going into the conduit and coming out dirty or tainted. And it's nothing wrong with the water. There's something wrong with the conduit. And if you've ever received a prophecy that was just off, there was something wrong with the conduit. Now, I value prophecy, and I don't play games with prophecy, and I don't play games to say God said when God did not say. This is why we must learn to hear with the ear of the learn what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Too many people saying how they feel. I'll get there in a minute. All right, so it is important now that we hear what's coming as a pure flow from heaven. It's pure. Somebody say pure. What's coming from heaven is pure. And as it's being released, it's being released through the conduit, through that water holes, like I told you. Who's the conduit? You are. What comes out on the other end of that conduit depends on what's going on in that hose or in that vessel. So if there's impurities in the vessel... This is so good. Impurities are going to come out on the other side. Oh, da da ba sha. Come on. This is so important. Hear, hear ye what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And so there's some things that can contaminate uh, uh, the prophetic word, or some things that can stop up or prevent prophecy. 
What are they? Let me give you just a few because I want to move on. I did say that th we should be able to download pretty soon this uh, a teaching. Uh, Pastor Michelle is putting it online. All right. So one is pride. Why would pride contaminate prophecy? Because pride will make you think that you did it. Pride will make you think that you're all that and a bag of chips and I can say what I want. Pride takes on the arrogance of Satan. I'm just as good as God. I got this. I know what I'm doing. Prideful people no longer depend upon the spirit of God. Can I tell you, you can't do this without the spirit of God. If you house depression, you must be very, very careful because that which you will communicate, you may hear one thing, but you may translate it differently and that depression will be communicated to others. Those with animosity, hear yeah, people talk. Some of them get online and they preach, they teach, they pray and everything they do, they sound so angry. They're just angry with everybody and they're so angry with the world. If you hold animosity and unforgiveness and you're angry with everybody, it's going to come out. Let me tell you, you're not God. So it's not even yours to get angry when people are not doing right or acting right. We've got to have the heart of God for these situations. This is why 1 Corinthians 13 tells us if you do any of this and operate in any of these gifts without love, it's empty. It's worthless. It's useless. It is of nothing and of non-effect. If you have animosity, if you dislike people, then you will begin to prophesy in error. Antagonism, unyielding. You cannot do these things. Listen, if all you want to do is antagonize, and I hear prophets do this all the time. Yes, you are a prophet, but you need to be careful of your delivery. If you are unyielding, see, the spirit of God, we must yield to the spirit of God. Anytime we prophesy or operate in any of these gifts, what does yielding look like? Do you ever get on the freeway? And when you get on the freeway, there's traffic that is going straight ahead. And when you get on, you have to kind of yield the right of way and let them go and wait for the proper time for you to move in. That's what yielding looks like. Yielding looks like I wait for the proper time. I wait on the Holy Spirit. I hear what Holy Spirit is saying. I'm not going to go before him. I'm not going to move out of my timing, but I'm going to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. People who are stubborn. Oh, come on now. If you are stubborn, uh, that is communicated in your prophetic word. I love independent spirit. Don't know. Listen, I people have this. Thing now, especially since we've been at home, since we've been shut in, people have this thing now where they believe that they don't need a leader, they don't need a shepherd, they don't need an overseer, they don't need a covering. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It's that type of independent spirit that will get the devil to beat you all upside your head. See, there's some things you can't handle in the natural and you, some things you can't handle even in the spirit. And God has set a spiritual covering to war and fight on your behalf. There's such an independent spirit in the land today. I believe when we have people come and even minister in our churches, we need to know who their covering is. We need to know who they belong to. Uh, you know, we have too many apostles uh, ordaining people that won't subject themselves to the house of God. Rebellious, stubborn, independent spirit. I can do it on my own. I can get it on my own. Well, you know what? You're going to get in trouble all on your own. Whoa. Uh, 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 rebelliousness is the next thing that I was going to share. These are the things that contaminate and will hinder 
prophecy. People that are too opinionated. When you are so opinionated, it's this way and that's it. Have you ever heard people that are so opinionated, it doesn't matter what the word says, they can't go with the word because of their opinion. Your opinion can send you to hell. You need to stop being so opinionated. It's not our opinion that matters, but it's the opinion of of God. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. They're higher than ours. And if we would just yield ourselves and humble ourselves, we'll hear from the Spirit of God. If there is prejudice, you cannot properly prophesy. Whether there is a, a racial prejudice, gender prejudice, age group prejudice, I'm going to say this Political prejudice, you cannot properly prophesy. You need to get yourself healed and yourself delivered or else you will not be able to properly say what God says because this vessel is not a vessel of honor that the word is flowing through. This vessel has now become contaminated. If you suffer from rejection, uh, then the sphere of rejection will grip you. Uh, those of you, listen, you've got to listen, listen, listen. You've got to be bold as a lion these days. You've got to come up a little bit higher. You cannot afford to come before people being intimidated. You've got to come bold as a lion. Know whom you serve. Know in whom you believe. Know that when God has called you to do it, he's called you, he has equipped you, and he's going to sustain you. You can't come fearful. You've got to come bold, trusting in the power of Almighty God. And those of us that have been rejected, oh, I've suffered from rejection, so I understand. And I understand that you got to do it with all that spirit of rejection hanging out there. I'm no longer rejected, but it's still waiting for an opportunity to come in. But we've got to serve notice on this spirit of rejection. Not here again. You got to tell rejection, you're not coming here again. No more. Say not here. When you have respect of persons, when you have respect of persons, it makes you a contaminated vessel. Why is that? Because you may not want to preach or speak or prophesy to the one that God says go to. You have your own choice of people. Uh-huh. See, we got so many out there like Jonah. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. I'm not going to preach to those people, God, because if I do, I know what you're going to do. You, you're going to turn the situation around. It's not your choice. You've got to preach and prophesy to whoever God tells you to. You cannot have respect of person. I'm going to prophesy to my friend. Because you see, that one over there that sits on the third pew, uh, on the right-hand side, they don't ever speak to me. So now when I prophesy, I'm not going to even look at them. I'm going to look over here and prophesy to my friends. I'm going to prophesy to those that like me. It's not up to you. You are not God. And you don't make that choice. You don't make that determination. you got to fill your heart with love, people. If you don't, stop prophesying. Because you end up prophet lying. Old Bishop used to always talk about prophet lying. We got a lot of prophet lying going on because of prejudice and because of bitterness and because of all the evil works that are trying, we're trying to allow pure water of the word to flow through a contaminated vessel. It cannot happen. Otherwise, it will be contaminated on the other end. Meaning, God said, my word will not return to me void. But it will accomplish that which I please. Now what, I'm, what I want you to hear is that his word has been sent out to accomplish and to prosper in the thing whereto he sent it. You know what the problem is? If you have a contaminated vessel, that word will never reach the desired end. Oh, stop being so hungry and so desperate for a word that you will settle on receiving it from anybody. You've got to know those that labor among you. You've got to try the spirit by the spirit. We've got to stop being so judgmental. Many times we cannot even prophesy correctly. You know what gets me? 
And this is all, this is me. This is me. <laughs> this is me. We have become so judgmental that when people don't worship like we worship, they're not worshiping. That's not God. Because we don't all worship the same way. My husband is a quiet worshiper. He will sit and he will just sit in the presence of the Lord and he will just weep. You may not see his hands go up. You may not even see a smile on his face. He just sits in the presence of the Lord and he will weep and he loves the Lord. We all worship differently. Hallelujah. So we've got to listen. Maybe I did not call what your, what's been stopping your prophetic flow. Maybe I didn't list that. Maybe it's something else. You need to know what that is and make sure you purify your contaminated vessel because we must flow purely. I don't want to be seen. You can't do this to be seen or to be heard or to get a name for yourself because it's not about you. It's all about what the spirit of the Lord wants to do for somebody and in somebody else. Hallelujah. So the gift of prophecy must be spoken with accuracy. It's under the direct supernatural influence of the Holy Spirit. These other things that I have named, uh, uh, depression and pride, those things will become your influence. And if the Holy Spirit is not your influence, then you have missed God. We're speaking forth the mind and the counsel of God. When prophecy goes forth, it is so beautiful to hear what's on the mind of God. I need real prophecy, real prophetic people. There's so many prophetic people that are lying dormant in the body of Christ tonight. I say, arise. We can't teach you how to prophesy, but you can hear, learn how to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Therefore, you will be able to prophesy because it's just saying what God says hallelujah isn't that good stuff and and again if we look at first corinthians 13 then we'll understand it's only done by love first corinthians 12 lists the gifts 13 tells us it's by love and 14 gives us order one of the things that i've learned about people that are especially those watch this i'm gonna i'm gonna listen i am an apostle and i speak the truth in love and i lie not and I know how to say what God is saying. And there are a lot of times when people are in a place, especially prophetic people, and prophets are in a place of blooming and they're growing and we're trying to teach them. Nobody can tell them anything. When you try to help somebody, they don't want to hear it. And there is an order to prophecy. Come on. We cannot be prophets gone wild. There is an order. Why? Because God is a God of order. This is why a lot of churches don't like prophecy. That, not that they don't believe the gifts are real, but the people have abused the prophetic word. Prophets gone wild. Prophetic people gone wild. They're just saying what they want to say. They want to humana, humana, humana. Thus says the Spirit of God. And they haven't even taken time to hear what God is saying. Not to even learn His voice. They want to be seen. This is so important. All right. Let me get. How much time do I have left? All right. 648. All right. We have about 12 minutes left. Let's go here. I want you to go. To, are you being blessed? First Corinthians 14. I don't know what my screen is doing. I don't even care because I'm going to teach this. I believe it's being recorded and I'm going to teach it. And if we got to go back, back and replay it, we'll go back and replay it. A lot of churches have closed the door to prophecy because people have abused it. Listen to your leaders that are trying to raise you up. We have budding prophets. You're not a prophet yet. Yes, you have prophecy. Now you need to know what's you. You need to know if it's God, if it's you, if it's, you know, if it's the devil, but you just need to know if it's God or if it's you. All right. First Corinthians chapter 14. This is really good stuff. And look at verse number three. Are you with me? I pray, I pray, I pray that you have your uh, Bibles. This is our kingdom advancement. We're growing people in the kingdom of God. I don't apologize for my lessons because uh, you guys are being activated tonight. You're getting this stuff. 
1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse number 3. It says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially what? That you might prophesy. There's nothing wrong with desiring prophecy. If you take this out of the scripture and say it is no more, then you might as well discount the rest of the scripture. There's nothing in the word of God that says we are not to prophesy. And even Apostle Paul says, desire even that you might prophesy for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God for no one understands him however in the spirit he may speak mysteries we're going to talk about the the gift of tongues and what that's all about there's a difference in the gift of tongues and the baptism with the spirit that causes us to speak in tongues that brings forth an utterance it's a difference and we need both. Amen. All right. He who prophesies speaks edification. Hear me. Exhortation and comfort. That's what I want you to see. When you prophesy, you speak what? You, the word says we speak edification, exhortation and comfort to men. We speak what? Exhortation, uh, edification, exhortation, and comfort. Why is this so important? Well, how come I hear prophets that are, you know, telling people they've got to get their lives right and they've got to get their lives straight? What I want you to understand is that as a prophet, the office of the prophet will bring correction. Those of you with the gift of prophecy, those of you that have the spirit of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy, you need to hold back on your correction. That's for the office of the prophet. Now, granted, watch this. I want you to get this. Most times as we prophesy, we will see things in the spirit. Yes, you have discerned appropriately. You know how to discern uh, when something is wrong and the spirit that is in operation. I understand that. But you have to know when God is telling you that it is for you to say something or if it's for someone else. Why is that so important? Because one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. So we need to know where we are stationed in a person's life. I'm going to try to move on, but I, this is important, people of God. I want you to get this. Don't get caught up on prophecy. Uh, listen, you should desire how many of you desire to prophesy? Come on. God is going to speak to you in different ways. He's going to speak to you in the dreams and the visions. He's going to speak audibly. You're going to see things. While I, how I learned to prophesy, I would be in prayer and I would see words. Sometimes it would be one word. Sometimes it would be a scripture. It would be a passage. And I learn how to prophesy through hearing the voice of God and seeing what God has given to me. I would hold back in my early stages and, and even now I hold back because I need to make sure it's God and not me, especially if I got an issue. Hear me, people of God. Everybody ain't going to hell, so stop trying to put them all in hell. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know why God is releasing his prophetic word? Because he loves his people. He wants his people to hear from him. God wants his people. This is why don't give me what you think. Don't tell me how you feel. That is, listen, that is not important in my life. I need to know what God is saying. I need to know what God wants me to do. I need to know if you're going through a hard time, you don't need anybody to beat you down anymore. What do you need? You need to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Get this tonight. People with contaminated vessels will beat you up over and over and over again. Stop being a recipient of a butt whooping every time. Yes, I said it. And it is the truth. Hallelujah. It's the truth. We've got to understand prophecy is to edify, exhort, and comfort. And if we're doing something else, then we are off. I want you to practice hearing. 
the voice of God. How much time do I have? I want you to practice. Let me, maybe I can give you this one. What does it mean to edify? And the word says so many things about edification. I want you to get this. This word edification in the Greek, I'm going to give you the Greek word. Oi kadame. Oiko. O I K O. Oiko. O I K O. Dame. D O M E. Oko, oko, oiko, dami. Oiko, dami. Oiko means, watch this, home. Oiko means home. Dami means to build. So this word, hear me, prophetic people, this word means that you're building spiritual houses. Now remember, I said we are, uh, we're natural people. We live in the earth. But we're not of the world, but we also have a heavenly place. We are with Christ Jesus, seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So that's a spirit man. Now watch this. Man is tripartite being. Body, soul, and what? Spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. When you speak to man, you are speaking to the spiritual. You're not speaking to man's body. Unless you're commanding the body to line up, rise up and walk body. Unless you're commanding to the body, open blinded eyes, you're commanding the body. But when we prophesy, we're speaking to the spirit of man. You've got to understand. Words will pierce the spirit. The wrong words will hurt and wound people. Words coming out of a contaminated vessel will wound people. People, But when we speak the right words, the words that God is saying, we build the spiritual house, the spiritual home, the spiritual temple. Yes, you have been called prophetic people to build in the kingdom of God. Wow. Oh, I have so many scriptures, but the hour is late. You have been called. To build. Let's talk about spiritual builders on next week. We have people that can build financially. That's good. We have people that are teachers, a, a gift to the body of Christ. That's good. We have people that can help build uh, naturally. They know how to build, uh, uh, put uh, rocks and, and bricks into place. My nephew helped build some of the most beautiful uh, buildings in San Francisco. He laid the brick. He laid the, the stone. Beautiful. We have those that can build in the natural. But I'm talking to those of you with the gift of prophecy. You have been called to build spiritual houses. Stop kicking people when they're down. Speak life and lift them up. Lift them up. Edification is to lift them up. Say oikodome. Oikodome. To build the spiritual house. We're going to look at this some more next week. It's time. Oh, this is so good. Let me tell you, this word blesses me because I want you to understand the importance of your prophetic word. That's why you can't hold back on God. You can't hold out on God. You know, this should make some of you just want to run into your prayer room and say, oh, God, just take all of me. Come on, let it all go. I forgive Mr. Joe Bo because he stepped on my toe, didn't give me the loan. I forgive the landlord that evicted me 25 years ago. Let it all go because it's not worth it. There are spiritual houses. That need to be built. Oh, give God praise. Come on. Come on. You have been called to build. Jesus is a master builder. And he's called you to build. Hallelujah. Let the prophetic voice of the Lord come forth. All right. We, now we have to stop. Because the phone, remember my computer didn't work. So I had to go to the phone. Now the phone says you got 15% battery. It's getting ready to shut down. <laughs> Listen, I want you all, get your devices, hold them up tonight. We're going to sow seed. God gives seed to the sower. Do you believe that? Do you be? I don't want to beat you up in giving. I want to encourage you. The more seed you sow, the more seed he gives. 
I started getting money coming from places and I was like, whoa, I, I don't want to say stop, God. Don't stop. Don't stop. Thank you. I just didn't know I was getting it like this. He gives seed to the sower. I'm a sower. I sow in people's lives. Do you know sowing builds lives, builds up spiritual vessels. See, give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Let's lift that device. Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, Rabasha. Thank you for seed sowers on tonight. I decree and declare, God, more seed. You said it, and I'm just saying what you say. More seed is their portion in Jesus' name. For every tither, we are tithing on our stimulus checks. We are tithing on our salaries. We are tithing on our tax returns. We are tithers. We are 100% tithers 100% of the time. And we thank you tonight, God, that you will shut up that you will shut the mouth of the lion and open the windows of heaven that we might not have room enough to receive. We thank you because you are God of your word. I bless your sons. I bless your daughters tonight. I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise as they sow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm glad those of you stayed on. I just want to speak this over you. Father, in Jesus' name, began to activate the prophecy. Let the eyes of our understanding be, an open un be open unto night. Let the ear of the learned be attentive to what the voice of the Lord is saying. As they were attentive to their children, to the cries of their children, to the cries of parents, uh, to the cries of loved ones. As they were listening in, just as they listen for their cell phones to ring or the beat that says you have a message, let their ears now be tuned in to heaven. To, oh, shout out Abbas. I hear God on that one. Let their ears be tuned into heaven to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Tonight I say, unstop the deaf ear and let them hear clearly. I give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo, give God praise. Come on, give him praise. I declare your ears are open and you are hearing what God is speaking from heaven. Mm. And some of you are getting ready to have uh, conversations with people or you'll release a word in season. This is time. The ear of the learned has the tongue of the learned. You begin to practice saying what God says and the word says you will speak a word in season. We need a word in season. We don't need yesterday's word for today's trouble. We need a word in season. But yeah, I know God gave you a word 20 years ago. That was good 20 years ago. Sometimes God will revisit that. But right now, we need, we need to be like the sons of Issachar, to know the times and the seasons, and not just know them, but to know what to do when they shall happen. We need to know what word to speak in its proper timing. Give God praise. I bless you all. I cover each of you under the blood of Jesus. You see where the enemy tried to stop us? Oh, you all, those of you that came on late, my computer just, I mean, it literally, the screen went black. It just shut down. But we cannot be stopped. I tell you this all the time. Hey, we got cell phones in the house. I just picked up, picked up a couple of cell phones. And now this one's getting ready to die. So I bless you all. I speak life. I speak the ear of the learned. I speak the tongue of the learned over you. I declare you prosper. Seed is your portion. The abundance from heaven be yours in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you on uh, 6 a.m. prayer tomorrow morning and Friday morning. And then Sunday at 11 a.m. we'll be back. We'll be back. I'm loving God and I'm loving this. Hold on to your faith. God bless you all.